To save time now, we will go directly to the next and actually also last but not least speaker, Maurice Messa, CEO and founder of uh, uh, Numeral IoT. He has over 14 years of experience in innovation and technology. He is an electronic design, uh, num uh, Numeral IoT is an electronic design and manufacturing company which specializes in the research, development, and production of smart electronic devices in Kenya. The production plant is located in Salanite Godowans, Nairobi, Kenya. So a warm welcome to Morris. Thank you. So my name is Maurice Mbeta. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Numeral IoT. And what Numeral IoT does, we design, a prototype, and mass produce low-cost IoT devices for the African market. So I'll give you a brief uh, story about myself before I go to IoT. So I lived in this house for 18 years. That's where I grew up, that's where I was born. And why am I talking about this house? Because living here has contributed to the kind of person I am today and as well uh, greatly contributed to what I do on a day-to-day basis. As you can see, there's no any cables, so no Kenya power there. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I've started designing electronics when I was very young and I believe technology will help me uh, elevate me and uh, actually drive a good car, live in a nice place, like all that. So living here, I had to invent everything. So number one, I started inventing power because we didn't have electricity. So the first thing, I took a bicycle dynamo, uh, installed a, a small uh, turbine, I generated my own power. But then I had another, pro uh, another problem. I had power, but I needed a way to store that power because sometimes there's no wind. So again, I had to invent my uh, own battery because I didn't have the money to buy the batteries. Another problem, I have battery now, I have the power stored, but I want light, so I had to invent my own way of making my own bulb because I didn't have the money to buy the bulb. So again, for me to make a bulb, there's a process, there's equipment, I did not have the equipment. So I had to also invent the equipment to make the bulb. So you have to invent the product, you have to invent the process, you also have to invent the equipment to be able to enable uh, me to consume uh, the power that I had, uh, 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 I would say, like uh, invented some, somehow. So, but then from here I learned that technology will actually be able to help me to do almost everything, uh, almost solve each and every problem that I've uh, encountered. This is back in 2008, whereby one of my friends would carjack because growing up I used to do everything, every single challenge that I went through, I used to go to technology. I remember one day uh, I, was in, um, I was eight years old, so my locker was broken, and then my books were stolen. So after like three days, I went to technology and asked myself, what can I do with technology to prevent anybody else from touching my locker again? I took a small transformer, small batteries, did a small oscillator. Then the next time somebody touched my locker, it was uh, almost a police case. <laughs> <laughs> so then after I cleared high school, one of my friends was carjacked. That's that, that, the first time I came to Nairobi. And again, I went to technology. I asked myself, what can I do to be able to help carjackings? So that's when I invented the first device where I was able to control um, vehicles using a mobile phone. I can see somebody's uh, whispering the outfit. I, uh, things have changed now, at least I can afford a nice, <laughs> a nice suit. And uh, it is through uh, the same, uh, like four years ago, I invented the first passenger drone because I was looking at the Trump transport sector whereby people are talking about the future of transportation is drones, but nobody was talking about bringing these drones in Africa. The first place who were testing the drones was in Dubai. So I asked myself, in Africa, that's why we have the bad roads. Why would they not start testing the drones in Africa? I said, I'm not gonna wait, I'll build mine. 
don't ask me who is the person flying the drone. So it is uh, through the same challenges that when uh, I formed Numeral IoT, and uh, so basically uh, with the challenges that I went through growing up, that's what uh, drove me to start Numeral IoT, whereby we design, manufacture low-cost IoT devices, and we manage that by controlling the entire process from the design to the manufacturing. So what is IoT? So, because I know there are people who are watching at home, so I will use very simple language for them to understand. So basically, IoT is giving voice to the voiceless. Devices that never used to communicate, now using IoT, you are able to give them the voice to communicate. I'll give a realistic example. So you have a daughter that you have educated, you have raised, that you love so much, and the daughter is married now. So the husband is every day is beating your daughter, but there is no way of your daughter communicating to you. So, kila siku wanakula kichapo, lakini there's no way of communicating. So, basically what IoT uh, is, is whereby now you're giving that voice to this device, that voice to this equipment, whereby in real time, you're able to get uh, real time information so that it can enable you to make informative decisions. Um, uh, yeah, informative decisions. So, example of... Uh, Devices, you have smart air condition, um, gates, smart meters, uh, smart lights, uh, smart uh, tracking devices, and uh, as well uh, security systems whereby they are able to communicate um, to you in real time. So why IoT? And why do we need uh, this information? So I'll give a very simple example. Uh, not long ago, when you wanted to take a loan, you will go, you will apply. Let's say you just need $50. It will take a long time for them to do the processing. And I'm happy uh, Jerry is here from Safaricom. Whereby now, if you want Fuliza, immediately within a minute, they'll be able to profile you, they'll be able to check the records and be able to know that you are actually able to pay the $50 and instantly you're given the loan. It's because of the information that they have collected. It's the information that they have. Real time, they are able to do all this processing. So what IoT brings uh, to us now is whereby it brings uh, all this information, takes it to our, our, our servers using AI. We are able to process very fast the information and make um, informative decision. So again, other applications for IoT, you ha can have uh, smart uh, buildings, uh, home automation, whereby you are able to control your devices. When you've left your home, you are able to turn off your lights. When you've left a home, sometimes like in Nairobi, we have uh, water problems. Sometimes water is there, but you're not at home. You cannot turn on your water pump. So using IoT, you are able to be uh, from your phone to check if there's water in your pipe. If your water pump is on, the level of the water in your tank, using your phone, you can be able to turn on your pump, turn off your pump when uh, you have enough uh, water pumped in your tank. Uh, energy resource management, uh, you need to know the amount of battery you have. Is your solar on? Uh, um, did the solar charge your battery well? You don't have power, maybe you have a generator. Do you have enough fuel? Uh, for example, like in Nigeria, you need to know like how much fuel do you have remaining in, in, uh, uh, in your generator. Again, uh, environmental monitoring, uh, medical and health care. So imagine if you go to hospital today, the doctor doesn't touch you. They'll just ask you questions. Uh, what's your temperature, like all that information, they don't touch you. So imagine using IoT, that doctor sitting in a place, let's say in Nairobi. Using IoT, a single doctor is able to attend to patients countrywide because all they, they need to know is like a way of capturing the information, capturing the temperature, and uh, they are able to give prescription to, uh, uh, to this patient. Smart transportation and smart manufacturing, whereby you, using devices, using sensors, you're able to uh, do um, real time, you capture real time data from, from uh, your equipments, from your machines, uh, from your vehicles, and uh, you're able to make informative decisions. So, what are the, uh, the challenges that uh, are faced in, the, uh, in, in IoT? So, number one, uh, you have power issues. And uh, with power, as Jerry has mentioned, that we have NBIoT now. So NBIoT, it's a, a technology whereby devices can communicate uh, using very low energy. 
and with advancement of battery technology, we have devices that can run up to 10 years without being, uh, having to be connected um, uh, to the um, to main uh, power source. Then, so that's, that's I, would say, I wouldn't say it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge now. We have connectivity. So initially, when utility companies like Kenya Power would want to do automation, would want to introduce uh, smart meters, they will have to invest also in the infrastructure. But now, we have readily uh, available uh, networks that have been set by, uh, by the telcos. I would say telcos have done a very good job. So you have uh, uh, NBIoT, you have Sigfox. Like in Kenya, we have also Sigfox. Uh, we have uh, 2G. Again, there are countries that are shifting from 2G to 4G, but then there's 4G Cat 1, which now is being used widely on IoT devices. And uh, before, it used to be very expensive, but now you have packages that are less than $0.2 a month for you to be able to communicate your, to your device in real time. And then you have data complexity because devices communicate in different languages, hex, text, but then you have APIs that you're able to connect and be able to decode all this information that is sent from the devices. And uh, many devices support different platform. Again, I wouldn't say that it's a much of a challenge now. And then data volume. So because these devices transmit, sometimes they transmit every five seconds. They transmit uh, maybe every minute. But then you have uh, people like AWS that have done a very good job in terms of uh, setting up infrastructure so that we can concentrate on what we do best. And they are able to... Uh, to handle the uh, data for us. So IoT in uh, utility companies, smart grid. So what IoT can be able to do for utility companies? So basically a smart grid is whereby we are able to um, introduce sensors to the grid. And these sensors can be able to get real time information of what's happening in the grid. So. It's in a very simple term, uh, electric, uh, electric grid uses information and communication technology to gather data and uh, act on information about the behavior of the supplier and the consumer in an automated fashion. So basically you have the supplier, you have the consumer. Now with uh, smart grid, you have visibility, I would say throughout the whole, um, uh, the whole network. So, so smart grid comprises of several things. So you have the gener generation part, you have the transformers, also you have the smart meters, which play a critical role um, in, um, in the smart grid. So, so with the smart meters, I'll talk about what we have designed. And we have designed the meter according to the challenges that we have seen, uh, uh, in, I would say, generally in the African market. So number one, one of the things that we have incorporated in the smart meter that uh, we produce at Numeral IoT, so you are able to turn on and off your power. So let's say you've lived your house and you feel like I need to turn off my power. So you are able to turn off your power using your mobile phone. So secondly, what we've uh, also incorporated in the meter that we do, uh, we, you're able to check the balance. So from your mobile phone, either USSD, mobile app or web, you are able to check the balance remaining uh, in your meter. Then thirdly, which is, say it's a typical African problem whereby um, now you are able to Sambaza. Sambaza means like sharing tokens. For example, I have 50 units in my meter. My mother at home doesn't have any units and I don't have the money. So I'm able to remove 20 units from my meter and send to my uh, mom's meter. So that's another feature that we have built uh, on the solution on, uh, on um, the smart meter that, uh, that, that, that we've done. And then we also do, uh, the meter do power quality checks and also appliance protection. So for example, let's say you have a power outage. I'll give you, I'll tell you one thing that I want you to, to do today. If you have a fridge guard or you have a TV guard, I want you to go open inside, check what is inside. Many of the devices, these devices that we're buying in the market today, it's just a very small, cheap timer and a relay. So this thing, it doesn't even cost a dollar to produce. And here you're saying that you have a device that is protecting your, uh, your expensive appliances. So with the meter, I believe it, it should be smart enough to be able also to protect your appliances. Because if it is the device that measures power, it, if it, it's the device that uh, uh, knows how much power you're consuming, it's a very small thing just to, to be able also to protect uh, uh, your appliances. 
And then with also the same technology, we are able to do virtualization of meters, whereby now we are removing the meter from a physical device to your mobile phone. And I have a question that I would want to ask today. Um, we all have meters. That sometimes I hear people saying, your meter in a daiwa. In, I'll just con uh, <laughs> uh, 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 explain. Eh? So meter in a daiwa means like that meter, uh, it, it has a debt. So, but a question that I want to ask today, is it the meter that consumed the power or you? Today, if you take uh, your phone and you take a loan from Fuliza, is it the phone that has taken the loan or it is you? But then because of the technology, we are blaming on the meter that it's the meter that has actually taken this money from, uh, example, Kenya Power. One thing I'll say, if today these meters will be given a voice to talk, many of us will be cast. Because <laughs> we are blaming on an innocent device and we know who is supposed to pay that money. Now, with IoT and with meter virtualization, whereby, let's say I'm, I live in house X and I have 50 units. I can be able to move with my units to another house. That means the meter now ceases from being a physical device, it becomes a virtual device that is attached to you. And with this technology, if you are supposed to uh, pay maybe 50,000 shillings or 20,000 shillings, wherever you go, you'll carry your... Where, yes, because now we have to set the meter free. The meter has to be... <laughs> <laughs> now um, okay so this is a simple uh, app that uh, you're able to use to control the meter of course all the functions that I've, that I've mentioned and uh, apart from that also the same same meter can also be applied in transformers because we need to digitize right from the transformer to the consumer whereby you're able to quickly do um, uh, uh, you, you, you're able to know, like, the transformer is able to know how much it has pumped to village X, and the meters are able to know how much they've dispensed. Now, using a quick math, you're able to know if there's any energy, uh, energy loss uh, happening in this uh, particular, particular area. So now, the hard part. So, what does IoT mean for Africa? So, what does IoT mean for Africa? And uh, I'll give you... Uh, Another uh, short story. Actually, I'll give you two stories. So I, when I was growing up, as I've shown you my house, I had an aunt. So now my aunt was, a very, was very innovative. So I was raised by a single parent. Sometimes my mom was not there, so I used to stay with my grandmother. So my aunt would serve us porridge, me and her kids. But then, if, you, if, if I'm not served with the porridge, of course, I'll, when my, grandmother, my grandmom uh, comes, I'll report. So he'll give the kids for, uh, spoons and will give me a fork. And all of us are, eat, <laughs> are eating in the, same, in the same bowl. I cannot complain because I was there, I was eating. But then I have a fork. So of course, you know what, <laughs> what, 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 what happened. But then, because I was also innovative and I was already designing stuff, I took a solder and soldered one of the forks so that it can be able to... <laughs> So for me, I feel IoT for Africa. We are, have forks, and our friends in the developed world have spoons. And yet, we are, we want to, to uh, we are moving, like, all of us are going to, uh, want to ride in this big IoT wave. All this transformation that we, we are talking about that IoT is going to do for us X, is going to do for us Y, but then even the average amount of money that a, a, a person, let's say in the US or in Germany, consumes, actually justifies for them to invest in giving them the smart meters. But then for an African paying $30 a month, they complain. So there's no way a utility company can invest in a $200 meter to give a customer that is paying $30 a month. It doesn't make business sense. So I'll give you another story again. So my friend here has a tracker. So one day I was invited in Germany for an IoT summit. And I was so excited because the day that I had cleared primary school going to high school, my mom had one goat. And she wanted to sell the goat so that she could take me to high school. Only to find the goat is stolen. 
So finding this device in Germany, I was so excited and quickly went to that stand to check. And I said, this is what my people need back at home. To my shock, when I asked the price of the tracker, it was about $100. In my village, a goat is less than $50. So will I buy one tracking device or I'll buy two goats? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is these challenges that uh, I had to start thinking and for us as Africans, if truly we want to move to IoT, if truly we want to enjoy this new wave with the other, other developed countries, then we have to invent our own IoT as Africans. And the way of inventing IoT is by controlling the entire process from the design of these devices, manufacturing, and prototyping. And we should not be afraid to test. I would say... Um, First of all, I'm, 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 I'm so happy with uh, what uh, Kenya Power is doing because through the innovation program, we are already in the process of uh, prototyping, uh, well, I mean uh, piloting with them. But I'll say that uh, utility companies should not be afraid of testing because I'll give an example uh, again with Safaricom. We have M-Pesa. So M-Pesa started in Kenya. If today Safaricom was told that you need to tell us where this technology has been done. You need to give us three countries that are using M-Pesa. We'll never have had M-Pesa today. But they took that bold step and said, this is the solution that we desperately need as Kenyans, as Africans. And now each, every country that you go, you hear M-Pesa is working for them because this is a solution that has design in Africa. And before I conclude, I'll say that we have a job to do as Africans. We have a, a, an obligation to do. And I'll say that initially, way back, Africans were known to hunt using bows and arrows. We used to conquer the world with spears, machetes. But things have changed. The newer generations are actually conquering Africa, I mean conquering Africa and the world using software and chips. And that's who we are today. And with the knowledge that we have we are able to solve our own African problems using our own technology and using our own people. Before I conclude, uh, I have another last story. I'm a storyteller. <laughs> so another last story. So one of my friends from uh, uh, Zimbabwe, he told me, look, Morris, if Nikola Tesla was born in Africa, if Thomas Edison was born in Africa, we wouldn't have electricity today. I ask him why. Of course, I don't agree with him. I ask him why. He said, he would have been told, yes, Nicola, Baba, I see you have power. Uncle Tesla, I see the bulb is on, but then I cannot see. I see the bulb is on. I see there's electricity, but I cannot see. Make my eyes shine more so that I can see. I think you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, of course I don't agree with him, but I'll say this, each and every person that is sitting here today, you have been put to that position by God and the institutions that you're working for. So, you have been given the powers, I would say you've been, powers have been vested to you to be able to drive the human race forward in terms of the technology, in terms of all these things that we are talking about. So from today, I want you to be an accelerator, not the brake. From today, I want you not to be the pothole, but I want you to be a smooth road so that we can be able to push this generation forward so that we can drive the human race forward. Imagine if the person who invented the tire was shut down. We wouldn't have cars today. So, in a f uh, those few remarks, uh, I believe that we'll work together, we'll support each other, we'll support these young people that are coming with the innovation every single day, and I believe that uh, we will push the human race forward, we will push uh, the innovation as uh, our, the theme for, uh, for, for, for this expo is, uh, I would say it's, it's innovation. And one day, once the time is gone, you have left the position that you are today, you look back and say, I was part of transforming 
these African utility companies to where they are today. God bless Kenya Power, God bless Kenya, and God bless Africa. Thank you very much.